Hi listeners, I wanted to let you know that today, instead of a storytelling episode, I'll instead be chatting with a guest, and to also say that this will be the last episode of season two. The last month has been pretty crazy, I've been traveling nonstop, and I also got engaged. I am on fianced. So if you'd like to get me a congratulations gift, I am currently registered at the podcast ratings and reviews section of iTunes, okay? But also right now I'm working on another project that takes a lot of my time and attention, but when the next draft is done, I'll be back with season three where there will be interviews and stories and more regular episodes that will probably be around December, okay? All right, love you, bitch. Here's the episode. Yeah. yeah. Juicy sweatsuits, doing lines in the restroom. All y'all just do Hello, and welcome to another episode of Lay Do You Remember This with myself, Dara Lane. And today we have a guest. Another guest. We haven't done a guest in a while. He's a friend of mine, he's an actor. Um, he was just on the first season of Euphoria. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Um, Lucas, Lucas Gage, you gorgeous human. You forgot to add reality TV philanthropist. And Norwegian. And Norwegian. Tell us about your Norwegian. (laughs) Hello. Tell us about your Norwegian heritage. Well, you know, I grew up always knowing that um, I had this in my blood. Sure, of course. Then I finally did 23 and Me. Yeah. Blessings. Blessing in disguise, honestly. And I found out the percentage of how Norwegian I am. And I am 22%. That is a substantial mm-hmm. Norwegian bloodline. Yeah. A lot of Jew in there, too, I didn't know about. Oh, Lucas, I didn't know that. Yeah. So we're, like, really simpatico. I think we are. You do look Norwegian. Yeah. You got the blonde hair, blue eyes. Yes. You're the, you know, perfect race. <laughs> I am a Jew, I can say that. She's allowed. I'm allowed. I just wish I was as tall as when I went to Norway and everyone was so hot and tall. Oh. Like in the airport, I was just like... You are you have a nice height on you. I'm okay. I'm like a solid 5'10". I would just like to be like a 6'2". Oh, sure. Wouldn't we all? Wouldn't we all? <laughs> I mean, not me. Um, but sure, I wish everyone else was 6'2". Wouldn't the world be a better place? I just wish Tall Girl on Netflix was based off of me. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> I mean, it must be so hard that you don't have any hardships. It's really hard being a white male. But you do have that Jew in you, so... I do have that Jew in me, and I connect with that Jewish culture, you know? Oh, absolutely. All about family and eating and kissing. Oh. Is that <laughs> <laughs> We can cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean... I'm not familiar, but um, I'm an American Jew, not like mm. maybe the Israeli Jew, the Eastern mm. European Jew is... Um, Did you do anything for Rosh Hashanah? Gosh, Rosh Hashanah, no. Mm. I haven't done anything for Judaism in a long time. Wow. Except for latkes. I love a latka. It's a real... I'm so a real good. fair weather Jew. Yeah. When Hanukkah rolls around, I want double the presents. Right. Is that not the most Jewish thing about me, though? <laughs> Again, I can say it. Um, so, Lucas, mm. I just want to touch down on Euphoria. I want to tell you. So, Lucas played the guy who, what was his character's name? Tyler Clarkson. He gets his ass kicked. He gets his ass kicked, and it was the first experience I've ever had of watching a friend get their ass kicked oh. in a... Um, in a narrative setting. Yeah. And I got to tell you, didn't care for it. Like you kind of thought it was funny or you didn't like watching it? It was upsetting to, to okay. me. Yeah. Like I knew it was coming and I was like, oh, I don't know if I can watch this. Yeah. I love violence on screen. Don't get sure. me wrong. But when it's against my little Norwegian prince, mm. don't like it. My mother said the same thing. I, it's hard um, for her to watch. I can't imagine birthing a child and then watching him get his ass kicked yeah but you know we do what we can for the money okay (laughs) we gotta get by somehow we gotta get by yeah it was um it was weird to watch myself get my ass kicked for sure traumatizing yeah traumatizing but 
but also it almost felt kind of um I don't know I kind of blacked out when I was filming it honestly so I don't know what I was gonna say it kind of was more intense than even being in the situation but I don't really remember filming it because I just like got really weird you were so in the moment you're just so full method. actor you're so method if I know one thing about Lucas <laughs> When he is on set, he only uh, <laughs> responds to his character's name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very method. I need to be in a safe space. Oh, I need headphones. I can't have any noise, any lights. PAs better not look you in the oh, eye. God. Or they're getting a backhander to They'll the be mouth. Fired. The fire. You um, do have that clout. Absolutely. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm actually the least method person. Ever. I would I could never be friends with a method person to be cab franc. Really? Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, let's all relax. We're not curing cancer. Right. Okay. Right. But of course, yes, to each their own. Each their own. Um, Lucas, you have a special story. A few. We have a few special stories. Um, but let's start with with uh Miss Dina Lohan. Miss Dina Lohan. It was probably my first or second year in LA. I was a teen. Oh my god. Teen, just going out to parties. Had no business being there. Whatsoever. Young Hollywood. You're young, young Hollywood. Hollywood. Well, not quite like what I wish my young Hollywood experience was. Mm. You know what I mean? I feel like everyone says they want to grow up in the 70s and 80s. I wanted to be in the early 2000s. That's the, That was my dream to yeah. move out here and start going to hide and lay do. Lay do. Me and you at lay do. Oh, Can you imagine? We'd be dead. We'd actually be dead. We would be full-blown deceased in a bathroom <laughs> stall somewhere. 100%. But actually, if Lindsay Lohan could make it through, then I guess we could. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> TBD. To be discussed. But I was at this party. Um, I don't even know how I got invited to these parties when I first moved to LA. You're just young and hot. Just young and weird, and I would get way too drunk and talked to a bunch of people. I think I talked to, who else did I talk to that night? I think I would just say stupid shit. Like I would go up to like Aaliyah Shawcott and be like, <laughs> I loved Arrested Development. <laughs> oh my, it's so good at Arrested Just be Development. like, thank you. Um, but I got very drunk and I remember I went outside. Yeah, I don't even think I was getting an Uber. I think it I think it was still Lyft days. I don't know if Lyft became before Uber, but I feel like I started U with Lyft. Uber was first, okay. and then Lyft, but how long How long ago was this? Let's see, this was five, five years ago? Maybe okay. six? So this was about the time when they were encouraging people in Lyfts to get in the front seat and yes. give them a fist bump. Yes. Which was horrific. I rode in the front seat of a Lyft. I was that basic. Oh my god, I love that for yeah, you. Yeah, love that. Okay, so you're waiting so for waiting your out. bud to pick you up, yes. your Lyft friend. Yes, and I'm with one other friend from back home, and we were just, you know, young, fun kids, and I'm outside, and I hear this raspy voice smoking a cigarette, and I said something, I don't remember what, but I just said something to be like funny and... <laughs> cute start a conversation and this woman with this raspy voice gives me this look this scathing look Oof. and says to me as she blows out her cigarette you're garbage <gasps> and that woman was miss dina lohan dina lohan called you garbage, garbage. Yeah. i was honored of course, as anyone would be. I was honored. I wish I came up with something funnier to say back. So that was my experience with Dina Lohan. I wish there was more to it. I wish there was... I a beginning, like a, middle, and an and end. A, yeah, there's sure. no, there wasn't quite an arc to the story. No. There, um, it, it's, you know, it's an anecdote. Yeah. Um, which I love. I also feel like the most important part that we're missing is yeah. what you said to get her to call you garbage. Yeah, see that That's part's a little the mystery. fuzzy. But knowing funny, noodly 18 year old me. Yes. I, you must have said something about Lindsay, right? No, I don't think it was about Lindsay. I think even in this state of mind, this stupid um, state of mind that I used to be in, 
I still think I would know better than to say yeah. something like that. I think it was something just to her, like, who's cute or, like, what's <laughs> what's up tonight? Like, something stupid. It probably deserved a little snarky remark back, but not not your garbage. Was it a real, like, like a, a very serious, like, trying to maybe, like, ruin the life of an 18-year-old, like look into your soul, your garbage, or was it like, your garbage? No, I don't think it was that vindictive and that cruel as trying to ruin an 18-year-old's life. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was more of a throwaway, your garbage. Ugh. Maybe I made it sound like it was worse than it actually was. I mean, I think getting called garbage is is pretty tough. Yeah. That was a delicious anecdote. Thank um, you. I think I speak for everyone when I say it was totally worth it, and I loved it. Thank you. I think you can go to your grave. No, I I would start putting that in in your acting bios. If I ever have the privilege of writing a memoir, sure, it will be in the that... special thanks acknowledgments <laughs> to Dana Lohan for calling me garbage. You really, you pushed me towards greatness. Yeah, I had to learn. Yeah, and I thank you for that. I love that. I love that too. Oh, also, someday if you ever meet Lindsay, you can be like, so how many times has your mom called you garbage? Right. And she'll be like, oh, too many to count. And you'll be like, well, I, I at least got one. Right. And that's that's all you need. Well, we do have our trip to Mykonos that we need to plan. Well, she closed the, the Mykonos, but oh. now she's reopening. But I don't know if it's in Mykonos. I think it's in Athens. Okay. I can do listen, Athens. <laughs> listen. You can take me around to any any Greek city. I'll I'll follow you anywhere, Lindsay. Just throw me a low hand in a club. Oh I'm there. Well, I mean, she's also in Australia right now. Oh. Doing the Masked Singer. The Masked Singer. Mm-hmm. On NBC. Do you watch that show? I do, despite hating Jenny McCarthy. You love the show. I do love the show. <laughs> but there are no four people I hate more than those judges. <laughs> Fucking Jenny McCarthy, I say this in nearly every episode, that she has the blood of children on her hands. Okay. Nicole Scherzinger. Oh, I love her. She is, I'm, I'm okay with her, but I, she's fine. Mm-hmm. Listen, the Pussycat Dolls didn't pop off in a real way for a reason. I liked her solo songs with 50 Cent. I like her solo stuff. I don't. Listen. I'm back in her. I get the first person, but I'm, I'm on Nicole's side. Okay. All right. Met her once, too. Lovely girl. Okay. You know what? I take it back. Yeah. She's fine. You know what? She's fine, actually. Hate Robin Thicke. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, what's his name? Ken, Ken Jong? Yes. I, God, I couldn't last an hour in a conversation with that man. I know... I know that people find him very funny. I, he needs to take it down. We don't all have to talk this loud, okay? I'm a quiet talker myself. I'm, I'm That's a mumbler, what it, so. I love a little mumble mouth. Yeah. I like a mealy mouth individual. <laughs> he's always just like, he's like squawking. Oof, love that word. Um, And I also hate that they're like, do you think it's Barack Obama under there? I think it's got to be Barack. And it's like, fuck you. Barack's not fucking doing the mass Singer. Mo- like, the best you can hope for is Lindsay Lohan underneath right. a fucking egg mask. Was there another season of the show? The second season just started. Who was the first season winner? The first season winner... Was there anyone cool on that? Um, the only person in my wheelhouse was Rumor Willis. Oh, cool. Oh, actually, also Ricky Lake. Oh, love that. And I loved a Ricky Lake moment. Um, Did you ever watch Charm School with Ricky Lake? No, I never watched that. You need to watch it immediately. So let's talk talk reality TV. You also have some reality TV stories. Well, the Vanderpump... The Vanderpump. Vanderpump rules. Excuse yeah. me. I don't know why I added a the. It's That's so fucking embarrassing. <laughs> I'll edit that it's out. so embarrassing. You. Please cut that out immediately. <laughs> that show is very dear to me. Ugh. I think that show is what started my obsession with reality TV. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Maybe Rock of Love and, and Flavor of Love started my actual obsession. Rock of Love. You're going to love Charm School then. Oh, my it's God. It's the Rock of Love girls being taught sh- how to be charming by Ricky Lake. You know, actually, maybe I did watch... Was the... Monique was a 
host one season too. Maybe I just watched that one. But was the girl Megan who was in like yes, Megan? Megan season two with the dog, the little dog. Yes, 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 yes. I love Megan. Love Megan. I feel so bad for her that like um, wasn't one of, like Megan wants to find love or something, and like yes. one of the guys killed himself. Yes, and they had to cut, shut down the show, right? And they had to shut because he like killed someone and then killed himself. Right, right. I remember that. Oh my god, your memory is amazing. Thank you. Thank I don't. You so much. Thank you so much. I don't have the details, uh, like at my fingertips, but it's something like that. Fun fact: Do you remember Flavor of Love? Oh, of course. Watch it. Remember Pumpkin? Pumpkin without a pump, without a P? Pump. Pump. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. So Pumpkin was at. I grew up in San Diego at the, and I had the Del Mar Fair every year, and she was working the hypnotist show. <gasps> That's what she did after Flavor of Love, and she hypnotized me. How was she? She was she was really quiet, really shy. Um, I still have a picture of my my old Apple of us two, and I lied and I pretended to be hypnotized by Pumpkin. I don't think I could ever be hypnotist. hypnotized. I think everyone, I faked it because I felt like that's what I wanted. That was the That's narrative. what everyone wants me to do, right? Yeah. You have to go along with it. But everyone else, I feel like they were faking it too, but. I feel like it's too difficult to be hypnotized in a, like a county fair situation. Right. right. Don't you have to relax? Like I would totally just cross my eyes and be like, yeah, pumpkin, I'm a, I'm a cock doo doo Like I remember I'm... I like milked my chair. I was like, I thought my chair was a cow. And I lied to myself, to the, the audience. Wow. That's um, how See, I start my show business. If everyone keeps lying to Pumpkin. She's never going to get better at her craft. Yeah. So really you were doing a disservice, but I totally understand the inclination. Thank you. But. Thank you. Um, that was my first experience with first the reality experience. star. Then Dina Lohan and then Vanderpump Rules, which made me fall back in love with reality TV. I was blessed with the opportunity <laughs> to be in an audition with Laura Lee from season one. Season one's L- Laura Lee. Laura Lee. Laura Lee. Who was leaving to do, a, to do a Jennifer Aniston movie. And I had the, the privilege of chemistry reading with her and actually kissing her, which I don't know if it's actually appropriate that the director asks everyone to kiss. I don't think that. Looking back on it, it was years ago. It was years Before it was a- Time's Up and Me Too. We live in a different world now. Completely different world. Everything has been solved. Yes, everything's fine now. <laughs> it's so cool how everything is literally awesome. Yeah, it's just like a total 180. It's a utopia. It's a utopia now. That's what Los Angeles is. <laughs> um, it costs new, it's the $1,700 new for a studio apartment, and we all live in a fucking utopia. <laughs> Where was I going with that? Oh, so... I remember thinking this girl was so funky, so fun, and Ooh. then I start watching Vanderpump Rules about two weeks later, and it's Laura Lee on my screen. I lost my shit. Then the cherry on top is I see her a few days later walking her dog. Actually, her dog shit right there. Oh. Right behind that wall. That's gorgeous. And I hear that voice, that high-pitched Laura Lee voice. Jax! Jax! No shit there! And I go outside and it's it's Miss Laura Lee from my chemistry read in Vanderpump Rules and we start talking. And then we developed a friendship and she gave me some tea about Vanderpump Rules Ooh. at um, one of our local bars over here. And then she kind of knocked on my door quite often and asked me to read lines with her and hang out with her. What a friendship! Yeah, a little friendship blossomed for sure. When was the last time you, you talked to her? It's been about a year or two. I believe she's moved out. I haven't seen her since. Ugh. <sighs> I know. Laura, if we could get her on the show. If you're listening. Please, please come back. Please, please come back. My favorite is when um, Vanderpump, when she quits, because mm. she gets the... I mean, I can only imagine what that feeling is like when you're like, like, I got I got a job. I'm quitting. It's right. like, I mean, maybe you should have stayed on Vanderpump. I mean, first of all, I would keep that job. I would keep that job hard. Yeah. Yeah. I would... That's like... You're the gonna, best job ever. You're going to make a lot more money. And... How much more money do you think she made working at Sir than she did in that movie? She probably made more... Obviously. In the movie, but in the long term, if she had become a full-time cast member, which right. I think she had it in her. She did. She definitely did. But she was, like, only, like, what, three scenes of that movie? Yeah. I, I yeah. Unfortunately, I missed that one. Big mistake. Big mistake. Big. Huge. 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 
we love Pretty Woman. We're <laughs> we're a fan of Pretty Woman here at Lady. Two. Fan of Julia Roberts in general. Oh yeah, all yeah, of her it. Sweetheart. Um, so you also had a little yes. moment with with Miss Kristen. Kristen. And Sandoval. And Sandoval. Yes. Oh wait, I know. Yeah. What's your What's your Kristen? Well, Kristen and Sandoval were the same night. We met at the Pitch Perfect 3 premiere. Pitch Perfect premiere. Oh, my God. Young Hollywood. Young Hollywood again. Everyone was freaking out about Anna Kendrick, Rebel Wilson, and I was just freaking out that the Vanderpump cast was there. I mean, that would be the only people I care about. I was screaming, and everyone with our, our mutual friends, Becca Gleason and Alex, did not know who they were. I remedied that. I mean, if you were with me. I We would have gotten kicked out. I know. <laughs> I know. It would have been bad. But I just I just walked up to them like I thought I was on the show. <laughs> and I started sitting at their table talking to them. It was also um, Ariana's brother. He goes to my gym. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, he was there too. Yeah. And um, Carter. Carter was there too. Oh, Carter, yes. And I was talking to Carter and Kristen and I said... What's going on with you guys? What's the deal? Give me the tea. And they said, you know, we're just doing our thing. And I said, are you guys going to get married? Now, this was before I saw this new season. Sure. And they got a little bit weird about that question. And they said, no, we're just having fun. We don't want to mess it up with marriage. Uh And I think I told them that they should have kids. (laughs) I'm sure they love that. (laughs) They love that. Couples... Uh, who are well into their procreating years love to have people tell love them. Love the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> love the pressure. So they didn't love that, but um, Kristen pulled out a cigarette, and I'm not a big smoker myself. I don't buy one, but I said, Lucas, you do not miss this opportunity to have a cigarette with Kristen Dowdy right now. So we had a cigarette on the balcony, and Becca came outside and said, said to Kristen, who are you? Like, hi, who are you? And my mouth just dropped. The, the nerve. disrespect. The disrespect of Becca Gleason. The goddamn nerve on that woman. But I will say, if a reality star, or like anyone even halfway famous, offered me a cigarette, I'd be like, yes, I'm a huge smoker. Of course. Of course. Like, get me, get yes. me in there. She was lovely. And she did follow me on Instagram, even though she unfollowed me like a month later. Mm. But in the moment... In the moment. In the moment. <laughs> those couple of seconds when she asked for my Instagram handle truly was the highlight of 2018. I, I, and she asked. It wasn't like, no, oh, wasn't I'm me. following no, you. No, no, like, no. Like, are you going to follow me? Fla- flash, flash? Flash forward. Flash forward. Thank you. I'm having a stroke. Flash forward a year later, I saw her again Ooh. at uh, the Teen Vogue party and actually had the nerve to ask her why she unfollowed me. <laughs> That's a lot of nerve. <laughs> yeah. I uh, thought Becca had the nerve, you've got the nerve. I've got the nerve, and you know what? She's a good actress, because she played it off like she had no idea what I was talking about. <gasps> what? Who How did me? that happen? And I really appreciated so, something that. Something about the app. The app. Yeah, the app. Wow. Something crashed. Troubleshooting. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to get my IT guy on this right away. Right away. Right away. Oh, you could just follow me right now. Nope, I gotta call the IT guy. <laughs> see what went wrong here. Oh my god! But she actually DM'd me um, the next day. Oh. I wonder if I can. You know what? I'm gonna pull it up right now. Cue it up. Let's do it. I'm gonna see what she wrote. It was something sweet. Oh my god! I it... had the nerve. December thirteenth, two thousand seventeenth. Did I just say that wrong? Let's start that one. <laughs> <laughs> December thirteenth. 2017, she said, so good to meet you, honey. You even got the honey and With two, two exclamation points. Point. Points or marks? Hmm. Points. Exclamation points. Points, yeah. Oh, that was tough. <laughs> I just <laughs> <went> argue. To <laughs> I mean, listen, we're in Hollywood. It's not D.C. I'm not a senator or something. I don't need to know what exclamation points are. Why didn't I write back is the biggest concern. Oh my god, yeah, you doofus. Should I write back now, two years later? Is it too late? I think you, I think it's past the point of, uh, Okay, we'll move on. The statute of limitations has gone up on that DM. You must have, like, looked at it drunk or something and forgot that she... No, because if I, of course I was drunk when I read it, because if I... (laughs) 
found it right in this state of mind, I would have lost my shit and wrote her a paragraph. And we we would be best friends with her by now. Yeah. We'd be hanging out at her new house in the valley. I actually remember bringing up um, her improv. <gasps> I remember when she told Ariana that improv was her thing and comedy was her thing. Yes. No, Ariana said that to Ariana Kristen. Ariana said, I'm she sorry. said, I take comedy very, very seriously. seriously. And I told Kristen that night, I remember clearly telling her that I thought she was a natural comedian. Because she did make me laugh. Oh. She was very funny in her conversation. Well... Did I ever tell you that my I have a Kristen connection? Oh. Um, so, you know in the episodes where it's like the four girls and she's one of them and they're doing the comedy show? Yeah. So one of those girls is my college friend Gabby. Yes. And my new fiancé, Nate. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I didn't say it for congratulations, but I will take but it. Congrats. Um, Nate was asked by Gabby to direct their sketch show. Oh. Yeah. So he has been to Kristen's two-bedroom apartment. The honor. The honor. The priv. Um, why don't we pivot to a, a little show called The Hills? Oh, The New Beginning, you mean? The New Beginning. Yes. Not the old. Not the old. The old beginnings. No. Um, So you recently just watched the entire season. In one day. Did you watch it, like, bumper to bumper, or did you fast forward through a lot? No, I watched every single minute of it. Wow. Yeah. I think I maybe missed the last episode. Or maybe, yeah, I think I missed the last episode. But I was recapping it for the podcast, and I had to stop because it was so profoundly boring (laughs) that it was hard to make fun of it. Right. Right. Um, and I like a boring reality show. I, but it has to be in the right context. Sure. Like I'll watch Sister Wives. Have you ever seen Sister Wives? Uh, no, I have not watched Sister Wives. Okay, Sister Wives <laughs> is about. Um, it's on TLC. It's an incredibly boring show, except for the one season where one of the sister wives gets catfished, and they have been milking that content for mm. four more seasons. Um, <laughs> Um, I like a boring reality show. Sure. But this is not like a like British Bake Off type soothing boring. Not like it's, a Mary Berry no, it's, cold Sunday afternoon. Exactly. Yeah. This is more... I mean, these people were always boring. Let's yeah. never forget that. Right. But I think a big mistake that they made, huge. Huge. Was making it an hour long show. Yeah. When previously it was only a half hour. Yeah, also another huge mistake, not having Kristen Cavallari on it. I know. Well, I mean, she, she said she couldn't be on it because of her, and I feel like that can't be true. Also no. an anti-vaxxer. Yeah. You know who looked great was Whitney, though. Whitney, she listen, did, I'm very pro-Whitney. Me too. I, I'm pro-Whitney. Whitney's the hottest. Whitney's the, the hottest. She's the smartest. She's the yeah. best. She's the only one with a real career or ever tried to have one. Um, she's a feminist for our time. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Uh, and she's the only one whose injectables l- look wor- good. worked out. Hers look great. Everyone cause... else on the show looks good for like 39. Yeah. And they're all 32. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got out of that season with the knowledge that Brody was a nightmare. Fuck Brody. Fuck Brody, man. What a downer. I am so glad that Caitlin's out of there. That she got out of there, and not only did she get out, but she burned it to a gr- to the ground, much like their Malibu beach home, yeah. and and went out with a bang um, with with Miley. Also, I found out Caitlin is from New Hampshire. Oh, cool! Which is where I am from. Yeah. She went to UNH, which I did not go to UNH, but the fact that a UNH English major. Wow. Got out. I love her. I love her too. I think that she might be the Lauren Conrad of the New Beginnings, if you think about it in a way. Oh, I agree. You know what I mean? I do think if they do another season, which not, not I don't likely. I don't I don't need it. I don't need it. Can we talk about the sponsored ads this season too, how obvious they were? I loved how it would just be like you're watching a scene and then suddenly it's like, why am I watching Audrina put mascara on for 30 <laughs> full seconds right. without saying anything? It was a full-blown Maybelline commercial or a Crest White Strips commercial. It's like nothing was said, but it was a close-up on it. 
I mean, I think, listen, there's not a lot of background talent, the backstage talent working on this because they do that in Vanderpump where they'll have like the Glam Squad right. app come over and it's just like, oh my God, Glam Squad's here? Sure. Oh yeah, it was so simple. I just ordered them on this app. Yeah. But at least they tried to work in some Yeah, they dialogue. tried to work in a storyline to it, at least something. It's not just Whitney, like, brushing her teeth. Like, you, what am I supposed to do with that? Those big teeth. Those big teeth. Almost as big as that lineless forehead of hers. Not a single... She looked pretty good, actually. She looked pretty similar to... She looked good. She looked good. She looked she was good. A, an emotional roller coaster this season. Her real life is way more interesting than than uh, the Hills' life. Yeah. I mean, she accused her ex husband of molesting her daughter. Mm, I did not know that. I mean, I guess that's not the kind of content they're looking for in the Hills. I don't think that goes with the storyline with her and Justin Bobby too much. That's more for TLC. Yeah. That's a TLC moment. Mm. Um. Any other parting thoughts on the hills? I think it was fun. I'm glad I got it. Don't know if I needed Brandon Anderson on there. So it just makes no sense that they would cast a... Yes, on his own, he has a very interesting story with his parents. But how are you supposed to assimilate a 22-year-old sober person with a bunch of 33-year-old parents Mm -mm. who are barely getting wasted? Yeah. And Misha Barton... Misha Barton, her audition. Loved her audition. I wanted her to get the part. I mean, can we not uh, work together to find Misha Barton some acting work? It can't Me be too. that. It can't be that hard. No. I did love her acting coach, though. Let's talk about that coach. <laughs> what did she? She said, "Can you actually say that other line like without the question mark?" Right. And she's like, "Oh yeah, that feels much better." <laughs> her the notes were so. They were literally like, can you do it slower or faster or without a question mark? Those were the three notes that she got. But yeah, Lucas, you take acting classes. I mean, that's a, those are some very common notes. Yeah. Question mark, sure. faster, slower. Right. Say nothing of the internal feelings of the character. It's just really about just the question mark. Right. The question point. The punctuation. The punctu- It's really just about the punctuation. God, what I would give to coach me... Mila. <laughs> I'd love to coach Mila Kunis, for sure. Uh, what's her name? Misha. Misha. That's right. I would kill to coach Misha Barton. I just felt bad for Misha, too, because she I really wasn't doing any heavy lifting, and I think it's because she doesn't want to. She wants. Yeah. To, she's an actress. Right. But, honey, if you want to collect that paycheck, right. you got to put your back into it. She was great on the OC. She was great. I loved her on the OC. Yeah. I saw her once at a Warby Parker party at the Standard. Nice. Yeah. She gets some sunglasses. You know, that did not they come did in not the branded their... gift bag. Shit. But it was more just like a... The sunglasses <laughs> party did not have sunglasses in their gift bag. They did have pop chips in the gift bag. Love pop chips. It was like five or six years ago when pop chips were in every gift bag. Right, when they were like unique and like weird now oh, it's yeah. every Ralph's in sight now it's very pedestrian so pedestrian Ugh. Um, oh you also have another um, reality show story I do <gasps> I do oh, you do I forgot about that one um, so I know we have a lot of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills listeners in our midst wow um, another top show of mine top top can we talk about Denise Richards? Love her. Love her. Love Denise. Love Denise. Want to grab a cocktail with her so bad. There's nothing I want more than to go out for drinks with Denise and Brandy Glanville. Couldn't agree more. I think if I could add one more person to that dinner party, sure, would be Camille Grammer. <gasps> oh. Those three at a table with you and I. Oh, my God. I feel like Camille would end up standing up and walking out in, like, 20 Absolutely. minutes. we get in a fight with Camille. We'd get into a fight with Camille, and then um, Brandy, Denise, you and I would just, like... Have each other's backs. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Denise is, like, real Midwestern stock, and mm-hmm. you want her in a bar fight with you. Oh, 
Oh, Denise and Brandy could kick ass. Oh, kick ass. They could kick some ass. I think if I had to choose between those two, Denise would be more of like a loyal friend. Yes, of course. And Brandy would be more of like, you can't tell her your secrets, but mm-hmm. you would get a cocktail with her and laugh. Brandy is someone who um, you start off your friendship, it burns really hot, and yeah. you're you're going out all the time, and then you hit a point where she does something really crazy drunk and you go you know small doses i love brandy yes. small doses She's a small dose friend but denise that's your long that's, that's your girl that's your girl yeah that's you are posting birthday instagrams mm. for her in the main feed yeah brandy is a, just a story mm. mm-hmm. denise has this humbleness this this thing that i also like about like renee zellweger where i feel like Ooh. love Love Renee. Love Renee. God, she's the best. But they're very true to their roots. They're kind of like a yes. little bit, a little hillbilly-ish almost, yes. a little bit trashy. And I person, personally, uh, being a little trashy myself from San Diego. San Diego trash. San Diego trash. I really relate to that. Oh, 100%. You know, you can take you can take the girl out of the hillbilly, you, but you, you can't, can't take, take your the hillbilly, hillbilly out of the, of the girl, girl, as yeah. they say. As they say, yeah. I mean, and she's also a saint, she took Same. in Charlie's two sons who aren't hers when yeah. his wife was, or ex-wife or whatever she was, was in rehab and he was yeah. probably also in rehab. And, and she, adopted that beautiful girl. That beautiful girl. And now God finally paid her back with that just oak tree of a man. Yeah. she got a super hot husband. Super hot. And a really cute house on the beach in Malibu. She's good. She's fine. Yeah. Oh, she's doing fine. I remember I saw an episode of her on The Millionaire Matchmaker where she tried to set up her dad with Patty. Oh, my God, yes. It was really sweet. I once saw um, Patty at a at an Erwan in Venice. <laughs> she had an assistant shopping with her, and it like looked like they were doing a lot of work, like mm. just picking out food and just like really discussing everything. Um, both in their like theater blacks. <laughs> it is a strange Wait, was scene. it was it maybe like that really punky assistant that was no. on the show? Oh no, I would have. You would have freaked out. This was this was like a young, like twenty eight year old PR oh, graduate. Gotcha. gotcha. Just like doing her best. Yeah. But Patty doesn't like redheads, so mm. I can't be. All in on Patty. Gotcha. Some opinions on Patty that I don't love. Mm -hmm. I don't like Mm -hmm. some of her advice. No. I had some... When I first moved out here, I remember a couple girls in my acting class were, like, contestants on the show. Not contestants, but they would, like, come in the interview room. Remember when she'd be like, no, you're too tall. Or, like, no, you're too this. Yes. No no one ever got on a date, but I remember remember asking them in class that. I don't know how we got on to (laughs) being our matchmaker. I mean, listen, I could just run in a circle of Bravo shows all night. Me too. Um, Okay, so back to Beverly Hills. Yes, let's go back. So this goes back to a a one-and-done season cast member. Actually, a very important cast member, in my opinion. (laughs) I I mean, really a trailblazer. The first Wiccan on a Bravo show. First member to cast a spell on another housewife. She put a spell on Joyce. On Joyce. Which I will say, as someone who has dabbled in the Wiccan arts in <laughs> middle school. Feather. Light as feather. Light stiff, stiff as the board. board. Um, you know, you're really not supposed to cast spells on people. No. Because um, karma. Yeah. Uh, except for like a binding spell. But you can't, you can't make someone sick. Also... It just won't work because that sort of magic isn't real. I mean... In my humble opinion. In in your humble opinion, I personally, coming from the Ministry of Magic... Yes, of course. ...have a little bit of a different opinion on that. Um, No, I I think Carlton was innocent. Innocent, yes. And Joyce was really out of line. I I was not a Joyce fan. I wasn't on the Joyce. They were both only one season, right? Yes. That's for the best. Not Carlton. I, I enjoyed Carlton her. could have came back. She she was maybe too weird for the show at the time. 
I loved her so much. I loved her. You know what? Okay, sometimes there's a housewife, and she's great, but she's not great for, for the, show. the city. I feel like Carlton maybe right. could have played on New York. Sure. They allow for more wacky personalities. Yeah, she would have been really good on New York, actually. You're right. But Beverly Hills, they really like to keep everyone the same sort of, like, mm. um just the same sort of personality like there's not a lot of room for eccentricities yeah like erica jane's probably the most eccentric out of all of them and she's arguably like super boring yeah she's kind of gotten a little bit she she's not doing enough yeah we need the old erica back we need old erica god i loved her so much in her first season she She was she was great i think they should just give her her own own show i agreed give her like a half hour yeah where it's just Watching a Barbie doll, like, do stuff. Yeah. With with Mikey. I would love if we could recast Mikey. <laughs> God, he is n- not my cup of tea. Who's your favorite husband of the housewives? Ever. Ever. It always changes. I mean, Denise's I love as, like, a real human being. Yeah, I like him, too. Um, God, there's so few husbands left, too. Uh-huh. I don't like Ken. Okay. I think Ken's trouble. Okay. I th- I think Okay, I like Ken. I like Ken. But I like Ken. <laughs> but he I don't I don't I don't like a husband who gets too in the mix. Okay. I think he gets too in the mix. Like I don't like a man who like yells at another woman's girlfriend. It's like right. keep it between the gentleman and the ladies. Like they're just So you like PK. Fucking PK. <laughs> PK looks like Porky Pig eating chicken wings in a strip club somehow all the time. He always looks like he's just like chomping on a chicken wing in a strip club being like, Oh, darling, like, let me see it turn around. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Beverly Beach. Beverly Beach. Dorit. <laughs> Beverly Beach. So you're a Mauricio girl. Oh, I love Mauricio. Yeah, I love Mauricio, too. I'm a Grigio girl and a Mauricio girl. Yeah. I just, listen, I, I love um, a Jewish husband mm-hmm. with his many daughters, <laughs> with his harem of daughters. <laughs> I, I think they're, I think overall they're a nice family. Yeah. And, I mean, they have the Hilton tie, so that's great. Right. We love that. We love that. Um... Yeah, Mauricio's probably my favorite. Who's your fave? I would say probably Mauricio. My favorite housewife would have to be Camille. Wow. Yeah, or Brandy. Oh, I think our just our dinner table. Just our dinner table, yeah. <sighs> Though I will say... Um, but all for such different reasons. All for completely different. I mean, yeah. Denise is my favorite as someone who I would actually genuinely... Me too want to be friends with same what i feel about um uh eileen oh but I, not like my not, favorite to watch but not i would fa- love to hang out with her i love eileen as a person i you know lisa um rinna has i love lisa rinna has really i didn't like her her first couple seasons because i immediately I, loved her i thought i thought she was doing too much acting but that's what I love about her. She played into it. That's true. That's true. God, you can talk me into anything. I know. I know. I, I love Rinna. Love Rinna. I love Dorit. Call me crazy. I I'm love Dorit. I'm learning to love Dorit. I did not like her at first, but I'm learning to love her. I think the worst thing about Dorit is PK. And if we could just... Yeah. I think the dissolution of that marriage is only a matter of time. But I, I love Dorit. I love Rinna, Denise. I mean, Camille. Camille is the best. Um, it, for love to hate. Love watch. to hate. I love. She's so entertaining to just watch. I. I don't think I'd actually want to hang out with her. No. I mean, after hearing her say that, um, that she's like Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah. That was <laughs> in this <laughs> in a sympathetic sense. Yeah. I was like, oh, but that made me love Rinna even more because uh, it was like the only time. Except for um, New York, when they talked about the election, yeah. where they've ever gotten political, yeah. And I was happy to see Rena really get Me in too. there. Me too. I was happy to see that too. I also love Rena's daughters. Oh my god! I love them. 
what are their names? Like Maybell and TikTok or something? Uh, <laughs> Amelia. Amelia. And it's like Chloe Grace. Yeah, it's or something like, Grace. It's like one of those millennial names. I need to look it up. I'm sorry. Amelia Gray and Delilah. Amelia and De Delilah. Oh, Delilah Bell. How Delilah can I... Bell and Amelia Gray. How could you forget that? How... Delilah? I actually love the name Delilah. I love Delilah, the daughter Delilah. I'm a fan of her. Um, so your story about Carlton. My story about Carlton... This is all such young Hollywood. You, I feel so gross saying this, but, but I also I love, love it. it. It's so That's funny. That's the point. We all love young Hollywood. We love it, and we feel disgusting by it. But I had a manager a couple years ago. She, she, she. She, 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 indeed. <laughs> and he was a he was an interesting, colorful man who loved to party. <laughs> Did not do much for my career, but... Did we have a blast together? So he would take all his clients out and let us just spend money at bars. And one night we got a table and I turn to my right and at her table is no other than Carlton. Oh my God. She was stunning, long fingernails, huge cross necklace. Um, and I just went right in there. I wanted to know everything. I wanted to talk about witchcraft. I wanted to hear it all. And she was also very reserved. Really? Yeah, a lot more reserved than you would think. But she was having fun. She was out late. I remember she stayed till 2, two in the morning until the bars closed in Los Angeles. I know. Well, Crazy for the Europeans listening. Yeah. I mean, when you got the babysitter, mm -hmm. you got to run the clock out. You got to run the clock out. She did not have her husband. She was just dancing by Ooh. herself. Like a lot of the time, I remember her just like dancing. Ooh. What bar ball. was this? This was, I want to say, somewhere dumb in West Hollywood, like Hyde or. Hyde? We love Hyde. Oh, not dumb. Excuse me. <laughs> um, no, probably, definitely dumb, but. No, but I think it was something even trashier, like One Oak. Ooh. You know, some, yeah, something I mean, like that. Bootsy um, Bellows. Bootsy Bellows, yeah. I wish I had more of an arc to this story too but the i think we just we just had a good time together and i got cut some pics with her and she was really nice and really soft-spoken and and quiet but lovely well listen when you have the dark arts on your side yeah you don't need to push your voice no you have all the power just in an orb in yeah. your belly lucas this has been the pleasure delight. has been mine. Oh, um, the pleasure is mine. I love this podcast. Thank you. It has put me at ease in traffic Ugh. and reminiscing on such important moments of my life. Um, Lucas, do you have anywhere where you'd like, uh, like an Instagram handle, a Twitter, like anywhere where people can follow? At Lucas Gage, L-U-K-A-S, um, on Twitter and Instagram. And that's it. I love that. Yeah. Watch him on Euphoria. Thanks. If you haven't yet, if you if you want to get some eye makeup inspo. Oh yeah. Check out Euphoria. Some fun jewels. And uh, follow the pod at Lay Do You Remember This on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can also follow my permanent my personal account at Darlene. Please, I love the follow. Okay, bye. Bye.